Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Godot tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a simple state machine in Godot, and uh, we'll use this state machine to create an effect of an NPC moving around in, say, for example, like the Pokemon games where an NPC will move around in the world, pause in different places, choose different directions, and um, we'll use a state machine to do this. So a couple things to note, this isn't a tutorial for beginners. Uh, you should have a basic understanding of programming in order to do this tutorial. And another thing is that the tutorial will, the system that I'm going to be using for the state machines is a simple system. It's a very simple state machine system. So if you have a more complicated game, you may need to use a different type of state machine uh, than this one. But this works great for very simple AI or a simple character that doesn't need to have a complex state machine. So let's get started. We'll create a new project here in Godot Engine. I'm just going to come into Godot 3.1, simple states create. One other thing, uh, I'm also doing a Kickstarter for a Godot course, and so I'll have a link for that in the description. It's the One Bit Godot course by Heartbeast, learn Godot one bit at a time. So you can check out that link and see if it's something that would be interesting to you. Okay, we'll switch to 2D scene. We'll create a new node over here. We'll call this world. We'll save save our scene here, run the game. It'll want us to choose a scene to have be the first scene that runs. We'll choose world, and here we go. Our game is now running. Let's create our NPC now. We're going to create an entirely new scene that will be used for this NPC. Create a new 2D scene, and we'll call it NPC. Let's see, NPC. And we'll add a new node as a child of this and it will be a sprite. There we go. And we can drag our icon.png onto this texture right here, this texture area up here, and we've got our NPC set up now. We're also going to need a timer, so let's get a timer node, and that will be attached to our NPC as well. Our timer will be a one-shot timer, and we'll have it auto start. Actually, I don't think we have to make it one shot. We can turn that off, but we do want it to auto start. Okay, now we're going to attach, we're going to come back, well let's save this scene. Just do control S, save, click on our world, and we can actually drag and just drop our NPC into our world. You can see that as long as you have the world node selected, you can drag and drop the NPC into the world. Okay, save again run our game and we should see our NPC inside the world. Perfect. Now we'll attach a script to this NPC. So we can click this little icon up here. And NPC, that's a good name for our script. And this is where we're going to write our code. So the first thing we want our NPC to do, well the first thing we need to set up is to set up an enum for the state. So we're going to use an enum and we're going to use the match keyword in order to match our current state with an enum. And an enum is just an enumerator, um, which means it's basically a collection of variables that start that count. So we'll have idle new direction and move. So those are our three states. Then let's create a speed variable. So we'll set, we'll do um, const speed. We'll set this to 100. And we'll do a state variable. Set this equal to idle. We'll get a direction. And we'll set this equal to vector two dot right. Okay, we can get rid of all this and just leave the 
process function here. Inside of here, we're going to match. So a match is kind of like a switch statement, but it has a few extra features that make it a little bit more flexible than using a switch statement. So we're gonna match state like this and oops, we'll just say idle pass. We'll just pass for now. Then we'll match with new direction. Also pass. And we'll match with move. Also pass. So you can see it's very similar to a switch statement. Um, but this value right here doesn't have to be constant. It can, it can change. And that's one of the differences. That's my understanding. There may be others that I don't know about, but that's the main one that I know. But that doesn't matter for us anyways. So for new direction, well for move, we're actually going to call a function called move and we'll give it a, I will pass it to delta. And so let's write that function now. So we'll say function move delta position, so our current position plus equals direction, whatever our direction is set to times speed times delta. So multiply by our speed and multiply by delta to keep things smooth. So our character should actually move now to the right if we stop and run our game. Well, actually I lied because we're starting in the idle state. So let's start in the move state instead and uh, run the game. We should move to the right now. You can see our character does move to the right. So that's good. Now we're going to we're going to need a function to make it easy to choose between different values. So we'll make a new function, we'll call this choose, and it will take an array of values to choose from. And then we'll just say array.shuffle. So we'll shuffle that array, and then we'll return, let's get rid of that there. We'll return array.front. So we, we shuffle the array and then we grab the very first item in the array. So that's an easy way to do, to choose between different values. Now that we've done that, we can easily set up our direct, our new direction up here. So we'll say direction equals choose, do the parentheses, and then we're going to do array brackets inside of here because we need to pass in an array to it. We'll say vector two dot right vector two dot up, vector two dot left, and vector two dot down. And then once we choose a direction, we also want to choose a new state. State equals choose. Make sure you do your square brackets for the array. Idle and move. Okay, so we'll choose a new direction and then we choose between the idle and the move state whenever we choose a new direction. Okay, now we need to use that timer that we have. So click on the timer, come over here. We're gonna use its um, timeout function here. Click on this, click on NPC up here. And we do wanna create a new function like this. We'll connect. So on timer timeout, what we're going to do here is we're going to, we need to, first of all, we need to get access to our timer so that we can set the wait time on it. So timer, if you do the dollar sign and then type the name of the node, it's a child of this so we can get access to it. Here we're going to set its wait time and we'll use our choose function again. And we'll choose between just um, three different wait times. So I'm gonna do 0 0.51 and 1.5. These are in seconds. Then we'll set our state. State equals choose. And this time we wanna choose between all three states. Idle, new direction, and move. So whenever the timer goes off, whenever the timer counts all the way down, this function's going to run and we'll choose a new state and set a new wait time. So we should be able to save this. And I think this will work now. Let's let's test it and see. So we're moving to the right. Oh, decides to move to the right again. And we just move to the right off the screen. 
So you'll also notice that every time we press play, it's going to do the exact same thing. So even though it's random, um, we need to make sure that we've randomized our seed every time. So we'll, we'll bring up the ready function for this. This function um, will be called right when the NPC is put into the world. And so right when it's ready, we can do randomize right here. And this will make sure that our NPC doesn't do the same thing every time we run the game. See, that time we went up. Perfect. And you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to check out the link to my Kickstarter. If you'd like to learn more about Godot and want to learn more about the engine, check out that Kickstarter. And I will talk to you all later.